So I think I got the swivel ball where I want it. The steering column was too long. All of it. It's probably my fault, but you know. This was a 30 inch column and I cut it down shorter. We'll go over that in a little bit. And I could probably go a little bit shorter and then it would swivel here and then we have the tilt, but I don't know yet. I think, I think what I currently have is, will work out. It's close, but I think I can, I think I can figure it. So these swivel joints are three quarter inch double D's, right? But three quarter inch lumber and then I put it on the put it on the table saw and I ripped it to 14 millimeters so two 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 cuts because that gets you into here now these things are a little jank on the inside but it'll fit in here so you can use this as your alignment tool instead of trying to cut that double D bar and fit it so this <laughs> I did it again. I gotta get from here down to there. This is in the way. The frame's in the way. The engine's in the way. Everything's in the way. We're just pretending now. Don't go freaking out on me. But anyway, so if this was... Sorry. If this was hooked up... be turning like that and then I got one can you see it I got one down here stuck in the steering rack freaking motor mounts in the way I have to think about this for a while I just wanted to show you all that <laughs> it's easier to work with than the big steel double D rod now I have to go work on my air conditioner because it's it's overflowing. So still working on the steering linkage, right? That's what we're gonna call it. Steering shaft process assembly method. So coming out of here, 
there's no straight shot. Header and the frame are in the way. But if I come out like this, then I can go like that and be in between both of them. And then if I pick up my stick down here, I can make them touch. It's not easy, but we'll get rotation like this. And we still have clearance from the motor side and the frame side. I can't hold them into place and do this all at the same time. And then I come up here and then we'll put another joint down there. So I ordered another joint and then I should be able to make some adjustments. Since we're using two, two joints in line, then we're gonna have to use these to stabilize the rod. And I got some thoughts on that. So if we come out like this, we could put this here and attach it to the firewall. And then we can also put another one down there. The problem is I'm limited right here on my angle. So if we go longer, on our stick, longer on the stick makes our angle more severe and then it's going to bind. So we're going to have to figure out the sweet spot for just the right amount of tilt and stuff to get through there without touching anything and still be able to spin. But, it'll be a little bit easier when I get the one, two, the third, fourth one. One here, one there, two in the middle. We'll at least be able to get something, something together to start getting closer to having the whole thing together. It's a process. So we're done for with this today. Can't go any further till I get the next part. I found a cheapo on Amazon. It'll be here the tomorrow, I think. Yeah, maybe. So we still have work to do here for the steering. So even with that little ball joint holder thingy down there, even with that secured, we're still gonna flex this dashboard. Even if we, even when this thing is fully tight. So I'm gonna build a bracket it's going to mount up here to this section, which is the firewall side. And then we'll angle off onto here. And then we can run cross braces to stabilize it left and right. I figure we'll run down here to the inside where the hood latch catch bolts to. And we can run across over there to the center crossbar and bolt onto that. And that'll link us this way and this way and that way so that it doesn't move. And it won't be really, we won't have to put any more holes in the firewall. So this ball just pressure fits to the outside with a set screw. 
and I didn't know we were gonna scratch it up this much when we were working on it but I think we can polish most of that out and then what I did is I fully tapped the D and screwed into it and then we can set this with Loctite so it doesn't back out so we pulled this out and then our joint comes off and then here's the end these I did it columns use a one inch OD and then everything else is three quarter inch OD so you could go ID and get this thing in here the double D it would be a really tight fit if you wanted to come out further but our whole problem was short and then there's just a plastic there's just a plastic gizmo in here there's just a plastic gizmo in there that is like a big grommet that the whole thing rotates in so we can put some grease on that and then stick it back in there I got a little bit of rubbing going on because there's some slag in there but I gotta sand this smooth and then we'll be fine grease it up it has another there's a little s dowel that goes in there to set that but we'll just use a set screw or something like that and hold it in place so I took the original cut it cut the end off and then welded them back together so now we started with a 30 inch column and now we're 26 25 uh, 25 to the end of the column and then 26 to the end of the shaft so I had to cut this off and I think I even cut some more off I did so uh, you know originally we were 30 inches To the end of the shaft so now we're 26 so let me clean up on this a little bit smooth it out and then we'll see what happens So that should get us right back to where we were. 
you got to clean out these insides. There's a little bit of tooling left in there so your stuff hangs up. Let's see if we can build a bracket to stabilize the dashboard.